As with all things in chapter five, we need to first learn some new definitions so that we can apply them to learn new probability rules. Now, the definition we want to learn here is the definition of independent and dependent. Now, independent events are two events that the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of the next event. There's an implied sequential order here. So first having one event happen does not affect the probability of the next event. And dependent would be the probability of the first event does in fact have a pro effect on the probability of the next event. So let me give you a couple examples here just to kind of help you out. <laughs> so when I consider my dice, and I have so many of them here, or my coin, when I roll them or toss them, every time I do it, they are independent. So just because I rolled a four here, whoops, <laughs> on that 10-sided die, has no effect on my next roll of that 10-sided die. Because every time you roll dice and coins, they're independent. So some examples here of independent. Dice, coins, the roulette wheel, right? Because when the roulette wheel spins, every time is brand new, right? Every, every spin has no effect on the next spin. Um, lotteries from week to week, right? So a lottery from week to week would have, you know, the, the winning numbers this week have no effect on the winning numbers next week. And anytime you're doing something with replacement, when you're working with replacement, that will be independent. Now, what about if you're not working with replacement? That would be dependent. So this will be um, without, let me write it here, without replacement. If I can fit the word replacement in there. Right? So if you're working without replacement, that would be dependent. Um, classic example would be cards for dealing for card games. So when you deal a card for a card game, being dealt an ace of spades, for example, has an effect on being dealt another card. Bingo is another one. So in bingo, if you ever play that game, there's a big drum with all sorts of uh, numbered and lettered balls inside of it. Once the I-23 comes out, that's it. There's no more I-23 in there, which is why everybody yells at you if you're talking in a bingo game because they want to be able to hear the, the numbers and letters drawn. Um, let me think. What about gumballs? So <laughs> I'm going to put gumballs right here. As a kid, I loved those machines that would be there when you would leave a store. And I would always beg for a quarter so that I could go get a gumball. And I was always looking for the red gumballs because they're the best tasting ones. But if I got a red gumball, that affects my brother's chance of getting a red gumball, right? So when you think about those gumball machines, those big glass bowl ones full of gumballs, pulling one gumball affects the probability of the next one. All right, so let's see and if we can put this into practice. So we're going to determine whether the following events are independent or not. So we're dealt an ace and then you're dealt a king. Ah. So in a card game, if you're dealt an ace, that affects the chance of a king, right? It actually slightly raises it because there's now one less non-king card in the deck, if you will. So there are four aces originally and four kings originally. You pull out one ace, right? Now there's only three aces and four kings still, right? So you're slightly raising that chance of king. So this is very much dependent, Whereas if you draw the ace and then you replace the card, huh? so with replacement, if you replace that card in that deck, then that's independent. So if you want to think of it, this one, it's because it's with replacement. And here it's without replacement, right? It's implied which happens a lot to us in probability sections. Um, a lot of things are implied, and that is the case here. All right, suppose I choose a student at random, and A is the student is in their first year at JC, and B is the student is less than 20 years old. Hmm. Okay, so if I know that one event has happened, does that affect the probability of the next event? And the answer is yes, yes, it does. So think of it in reverse. If I know event B, if I know that the student is less than 20, so they're 18 or 19, 
then they're more likely to be in their first year at JCSA than their fourth year, right? It can happen because we do have some high school students starting pretty early, but it's, it's unusual. So this is actually dependent. Knowing one of these events has occurred affects the chances of the next event. It's a little weird, but true. Now, how does this compare to the other thing we've learned, which is the disjoint piece? And the answer is they're kind of different. <laughs> they, they work in different circumstances. Um, independent is when you're talking about a sequence of events. So you're saying, look, first I toss this die, there's once, and then I pick it up and toss it again. So I'm talking about in sequence, multiple events in sequence. That's important. And you're saying, look, just because I rolled a 17 on the first toss has no effect on the next toss, right? Whereas disjoint is talking about two things happening, multiple events happening at the same time. So it's talking about, I tossed this die once. Is it a 17 or is it a four, right? 17 and four are disjoint. Right? So you're talking about single time as opposed to, mm, I'm going to do this in a different color here, multiple events at the single time as opposed to multiple events in sequence. So if you're talking about doing things more than once, it's going to mean independence. Right? That is the way this is going to work. And if you're talking about a single, like I'm going to draw a single soldier from this group, right? Like the last example in 5-2, then that will be disjoint or not disjoint. Um, it's a minor note, but actually if events are disjoint, then they must be dependent because you're affecting the probability so much. So think about it this way. If, if two of ones are disjoint, so for example, a five and a six, they're disjoint. So if I roll this one time and it becomes a five, then I know my probability of six is now zero because it didn't happen, right? Because you only get to toss once. That's it, right? So now the probability of five is 100% and the probability of all the other sides is zero. When I pick it back up in my hand, well, then all the probabilities are back on at one sixth. But once I toss it, it's either a five or it isn't, right? So if those sides are disjoint. Independence really talking about um, more than once. So it's a little weird to think of it that way. But disjoint events must be dependent because you're affecting the probability so drastically you're turning it into zero, if you want to think of it that way. So it's a little bit trivial. So we don't really worry about that that much, but just in case you were wondering. All right, so let's look at these two examples down here. We're going to determine whether these events are disjoint, independent, or neither. So a student is chosen from the class and a student is a senior and a student is a junior. Okay, so they cannot be both, right? So this is disjoint. One student cannot be both things. All right, a student is chosen from the class. The student is in a sorority and a student is a woman. Hmm. Okay, so that's not disjoint because Definitely a person could be in both things. So not disjoint because a person could do both. A person could be both a woman and in a sorority. Or I would say do both, but be in both. How about that? Okay, so it's not disjoint. What about independent? Well, as tempting as it is to say, oh, of course it would be independent. No, it wouldn't. Because if you know the person's a woman, then the chances that they're in a sorority goes up astronomically. So imagine this for just a second. So I'm going to write dependent here. If you're in a class full of students, say, and it's, you know, I don't know, male and female 50-50, fine. And then you say, okay, what's the chance of being in a sorority in this room? And pretend it's, I don't know, 10%. Now, consider only the women in the room. Forget about all the guys. Just say, only women. Now, what's the chance of being in a sorority for just those women? 
it goes up, right? Because all the men have been knocked out of the running. They're not even considered as part of the denominator anymore for your probability. Exactly. So it's dependent because um, knowing A is true, it doesn't even matter. Knowing event A is true affects the probability of B or vice versa. It doesn't make any difference. Knowing one event is true or occurred affects the probability of the other event. It's a little weird to think about. Now, you can imagine, oh, those probabilities are going to get a little difficult, right? And that is section 5-4, right? So we won't worry about that type of stuff for 5-3. And yes, those probabilities are trickier. Um, currently, we actually are not going to cover them in the course, but that might change in future semesters, so don't hold me to it. But in fall 2020, we are not covering them.